and welcome to Abstract Boss. My name is Ashley and today I'm going to talk to you about nine different ways that you can protect your work surface from resin. So if that's something that interests you, stay tuned. All right, so tip number one is a tablecloth. I have a plastic tablecloth that I got from the dollar store. Boop. And I have that as my constant work surface protection. It has been my favorite and easiest thing to replace. I folded this one up into four sections and I just cut away the top section once it gets a little too ripped or destroyed or just there's so much glitter and resin on here that I just cannot fathom trying to pick off all those itty bitty tiny pieces. But this is a fresh layer. Um, actually, mostly fresh. There's still some resin on here that I can pick off, but this is layer number two out of four, and it is one of my best methods to protecting my surface, and so that is why I started it with number one. Numbers two, three, and four. I went ahead and grouped these together because they're kind of all the same thing. They come on a roll, and they are utilized in the kitchen. Well, number four is not. I don't think so, at least but they are all very, very similar. And so I went ahead and grouped them together. Now, if you have freezer paper or wax paper in your kitchen, those are easily used. I just went ahead and used some tape on both sides to tape it down so it didn't keep rolling up on me. And that's what I used to use to protect my surface until I got my black tablecloth. Now, I also was turned on to glassine art paper. This I use for shipping but I was recommended this from Annie's Art Studio, and uh, I personally think that it's a really similar texture as the parchment paper. Um, it's similar though, not exact, so I don't recommend wrapping your art pieces with the freezer paper. The glass line paper is super smooth, and I think that it would work just as well to protect your surface. The problem is it is more expensive. So if that's not something that you have laying around, then I would save that particular roll for shipping. I would not buy that one for protecting the surface. I just wanted to throw that one in there just in case you have it at home and didn't have any of the other options available to you. So that way you were able to still protect your surface in a pinch. Okay, I accidentally said parchment paper. I did not mean to say parchment paper. I meant to say freezer paper. One side of freezer paper feels nice and smooth. The other side feels like parchment paper. <laughs> and so you don't want to utilize parchment paper or that papery side from freezer paper. Resin will not pop off of that. And then you're just gonna have to throw it all away. If that's your intention, then I guess fine, but shame on you. Reuse your stuff and get as many uses out of something as you can before you throw it away. I am so sorry I said parchment paper. I didn't mean to confuse anyone. All right, number five is a garbage bag. Yes, I really hope you have some garbage bags or something like that in your kitchen. Um, you can utilize a kitchen garbage bag over and over quite a few times before the resin will eventually just sort of peel some of that plastic back and then you can't reuse it. And so I have utilized that a few times. I also utilized it on top of my curing projects and I did that just in case it dropped so that way nothing would stick to it and I wouldn't be able to salvage the situation. Now that actually happened on one of my art pieces and I was able to peel the garbage bag off the next day. I was extremely bummed because now I have to sand the whole thing down and then top coat it, which is a lot of extra work, but at least the whole thing is still saved. Number six, a silicone mat. Now, of course we have silicone molds, so a silicone mat is also an extremely, extremely good one to use. Uh, this you would have to actually buy, oh look, resin just popped off too. <laughs> This one you would have to buy from Amazon, which I have in my Amazon like shop groupings, and those are in the description below. So a silicone mat is one of those things that you're always gonna be able to remove the resin from, which is fantastic. That way you can constantly reuse it. So if I have a small enough project, you'll see this underneath my videos whenever I'm working with jewelry. Number seven is kind of a two-part 
one, but I had a foam board for a school project from my son and I had packing tape and I didn't have a tablecloth. I wasn't able to go to the store and so I needed something in a pinch and I took... So sorry. Oh my gosh. I took some tape though. And then wrapped it around and that's it. I just kept going all the way across. Now that did utilize a lot of packaging tape, but this actually worked for, um, I made this as my base. I had this so that way uh, when it was on the shelf, I could slide it out and push it back in. And you can do that when you have a decent amount of coasters, but not too many because it would get a little heavy and then the foam would just bend. Number nine a blue painter's tarp. Now, I am certain that there are other colors too. I'm pretty sure I've used a silver one, but a painter's tarp, the plastic ones, um, yes, it's just plastic. I know, but you could reuse this a lot of times. I had this underneath my workstation for quite a while until I kind of wanted to fancy up the place a little bit more. And so I got rid of the blue painter's tarp because it just didn't look very aesthetic. And <laughs> I like that it was great for constantly removing the resin, but it did leave a texture. So if you didn't want that texture on your leftover resin pieces, then it's not very advantageous. I have some of uh, leftover resin that was on a blue painter's tarp. And this is what the top side looks like. It is freaking gorgeous. Um, one little piece got caught there. Oops. There we go. Um, I love it. I think it's beautiful, but look at the other side. It's not very pretty. And that is why I decided to stop using the painter's tarp. I like to utilize my leftover resin. And sometimes I don't know if the bottom looks better than the top. And I don't want to take away the bottom as an option. I like to be able to pick from both sides. All right, are you ready for bonus number 10? So I put this vinyl mat underneath my workspace and I did this just to protect it. I didn't even think anything of it when it came, I just didn't want it to get on the concrete. And I made a huge mess and the resin popped right off. So that was super awesome. Uh, there's actually more on here. Let me grab a razor and show you. Okay. I had an X-Acto knife, so I just went ahead and grabbed that. My nail is not popping under here, so look at that. Boop, boop, boop. Staticky. Look at that. Pops right off. Let's see. Oh, there's some right here. So this is just one way to protect your work surface. Personally, I think that it comes off easier from the tarp or the plastic that you find that you can put like in a crawl space. It's super, super thick plastic. And I had a roll of that because we had to redo our whole crawl space. And so I ended up utilizing that to lay out and protect my surface. Eventually it got holes though from me just destroying it. My cat walking in here deciding to claw it up. And that obviously was not helpful. But let me show you what it looks like. I have some wrapped around one of my saw horses. All right, so you guys are seeing more of my garage floor than you probably intended to with this video. But this is what the plastic look like, looks like. I, oh, okay, my husband got these in. <laughs> um, couldn't get these in. I think I had to have them use a hammer or something. But this is the plastic. And I put them around the wooden saw horses so that way the resin wouldn't stick to the legs when it dripped over. This is what I originally had before I found a really good piece of furniture to put the table on. So now this is just what I use to um, put my camera up at like face level. So this is what that plastic looks like. That's it everyone. Let me know in the comments below which one or which ones you did not realize would be perfect for removing resin after it's cured. And then make sure to share this video so that way any of your other beginner artist friends can have multiple options for protecting their work surface, especially when they're gaining that knowledge and having no idea what to do when they're in a pinch. 
I'm here for y'all. And don't forget to join my new art challenge group. It is a 52 week art challenge, but you don't have to do every single one of them. You can pick and choose whichever ones you want to be a part of. And if you win that week, you get entered in for the monthly award. And y'all, these awards look really freaking cool. I'm so excited. I'm getting them designed out right now from an Etsy seller. They're beautiful. So if you just wanna do one week out of June or one week out of December, you can pick. I have, I'll have everything listed out. And that's it. Stay tuned until next Friday for my next video. I'm gonna to talk to you about how to properly mix resin and to know that it is mixed because I know that has been a common question that I get from a lot of beginner artists is am I mixing enough or too much? And I just think that that was a very common question that I had myself uh, when I was doing different resins, whether it was one to one or a two to one ratio, it didn't matter. I was so nervous and confused. So I'm here to help you answer those questions. So next week we are going to talk about measuring and mixing resin. Stay tuned.